Hey everyone, it's Doug Maiden from Beck Technology and I am in customer success. I want to share something today which in virtually all customer success meetings I have is to have uh, the SMEs really start to understand how they can author their unit price database, manage it at a consistent level, and uh, uh, keep it updated. Maybe it's once a quarter, semi-annually, or annually. Now, on the screen, what you'll notice is I have Data Manager up at the moment, and I've got a connection profile that I'm connected to right now, which is rates and resources. So in Data Manager, there are several constructs that may, uh, I would imagine most SMEs are aware of, from rate tables to assemblies, all the way down to units of measure. Now, many of you may have experienced this during your implementation that you had an implementation specialist do a lot of the heavy lifting, but at some point you have to do that. Now, one other thing that I would also always recommend is when you're doing this, whether it's in the hosted environment or whether it's on-prem, is that you use the san uh, a sandbox in the hosted, which we would set up for you. If it's on-prem, contact us and we'll work with your IT group and they can set up a parallel either environment or a sandbox where you can do the edits. Very important. Any sort of edits that you're going to make, you always want to do it offline in a, in a, a safe environment, test it, and then uh, tell your IT people to go ahead and promote or again, if it's on a hosted environment, you can actually promote that. So really simple changes, as I mentioned. You can just simply do it in da uh, Data Manager. Heavy lifting, like we've done in implementation services for you, is traditionally done by going to the Data Manager mode and exporting the database. So I'm gonna go ahead and just export that to my desktop and in, into Data Manager, and this is my outbound. So export, say rates and resources, and I like to date it. So this, and it's gonna simply write out an Excel file for me. Now, this flattens everything out, which is great, because now you can go ahead and traverse across all of the database, really understand what is in there, and of course, because it's in Excel, you can do searches and replace. So find something and replace it, if it is a, a large lift that you need to do. Now, also a really important tip here, is I'm not uh, advocating that you just take everything out and then put everything back in and hope it goes in the right place. It should, but I am really a big fan of also creating an empty spreadsheet. So here, when I say create empty, this might be an import update. Import update for line items. And I like to also version those. So if I do, say for example, version 1.0 of my updates, maybe it's unit price updates or something like that. What I can now do is strategically lift the flattened out database, make my edits, and then simply upload the change. And then again, always do that either in a sandbox or a non-production or your ne next possible production database. So let's take a quick look at that. I've got two Excel files. One is the complete database flattened out. And as this opens up, I'm gonna go ahead and enable the macro. You can see, depending upon the size of your database, there may be several assemblies. A little quick tip here is the two little arrows to the left-hand side in the middle in Excel right mouse button click, you can see every worksheet that's been exported out from Data Manager. You can jump to any sheet. There's a lot of assemblies here, but probably the important ones, as an example, might be line items, right? You wanna update some unit prices or something like that, either, again, quarterly, semi-annually. My personal preference, as I mentioned before, is don't try to load everything back in. Be very strategic. Here, I'm going to go ahead and take my empty blank worksheet, and as it appears, this is the bare minimum requirements to successfully do an import. The sheets along the bottom, from configuration all the way to units, have to be there for the import to run properly. At the same time, the row header, typically row three, has columns that are important for the import to be aware of so that it can put the information back into Data Manager. 
in this ex uh, brief example, I'm going to work with the line items. So all I really need to do is move over to the flattened out database and lift everything out. So I'm going to select on row three, shift control, arrow key all the way to the bottom, control C to copy, and then simply paste in to my clean spreadsheet the same data. So let's just go ahead. And all of my data has now been strategically lifted out. Here, if I wanted to, and I'll just do it as a kind of a brief thing, you know, just type in a numeric value like $1, and if I started copying that down, then I could start pushing that data back in. Now, just to keep it real short and simple, let me just go ahead and remove all this for the time being. And I've got these items that I want to go ahead and promote back into the database. And it's just the reverse procedure. I use an import, I point to my import, and just and immediately ahead. it's going to scan all the worksheets and then bring in any updates that are necessary. In the case that I was demonstrating, it was unit price updates. So what just happened as I kind of open these file, uh, the file back up is any one of these files or any one of these line items, I could then go in and just start taking a look at these items. So let me just go ahead and lift one up and go back to Data Manager, and then in my line items, say for example in the table view, I can go ahead and then start searching for my line items and start to see right here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and again, whatever kind of updates you would like to make in Excel that are global, do it very, very quickly, and then push it back in. We really like the opportunity to work with the SMEs at all offices, thinking about uh, updating unit prices, thinking about maybe uh, tweaking assemblies, maybe updating rates and resources. It really depends upon the, the level of detail that's in your database. But uh, customer success is here to help mentor all of you through that process of really getting from that implementation adoption to mastery and being able to, to really author the data the way you need it for your end users.